Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, today I'm going to show you how I have my external antennas set up in my house and how I got them through the wall, what kind of um, you know box or connector I use, and then also some other details about you know things to watch out for when you install them in your house. So if you've seen my other videos, I've gone into how you take apart gateways to get um, you know connectors on the circuit board and then you can run an external antenna. This new gateway here, this is the G4AR gateway. It already has SMA connectors on it, so you don't actually have to take it apart. But there are some nuances that I'll talk about that here in a second, including a new part that Waveform uh, has out. So, you know, those are what I'm going to cover and give you a little bit of details about this one specifically. Is when it came out with it, everyone's very excited that it has external antenna port. But I quickly found a flaw when I tried to hook up my waveform to this one. And that's a practical matter that because the ports point vertically and they're downwards, the cable that comes with waveform, it's not very flexible um, at the end. And that's because it is a high quality cable, which means it does not have as much signal loss as like the thin small cables do. But the downside of that is that it doesn't make this 90 degree bend and the gateway for me won't stand up actually, it'll, it'll flip over. So I end up just putting it on the side so that the ports come out. So I actually reached out to Waveform about that and I said, hey, you know, the kit's great, it has everything you need for the other gateways. But if you have this new gateway, I actually need some 90 degree elbows. So uh, Waveform is really cool. This is why I, I support them as far as covering them on the channel. You know, they don't pay me to make the videos or anything. But um, I reached out to them. I said, hey, these really need 90 degree angles and I don't see any on your website. So they actually went out and sourced these. So now if you have this gateway, you can let them know and they'll actually include these uh, in the kit for you. Uh, for this um, this new T-Mobile one. So these are just little uh, connectors and all they do is they take these uh, SMAs that are on the bottom and take them from a vertical connection to a horizontal. And there's another side benefit to it as well and that's that they pivot around. So I found it actually is very nice for hooking up my um, cabling because they can all kind of be pointed a little bit towards each other since they all kind of funnel in to a single um, bundle there. So I'm going to show you how that's hooked up. All right, there it is, all hooked up. And these, again, they swivel so you can adjust them uh, as needed to fit. I'm going to show you how I ran the cable through the wall. Uh, so let's go up to the third floor of the attic space where I actually have that all set up. All right, so we're up here. This is the third floor loft. And here is the door to the attic. And so in here, we have the antennas and the cabling. And so you can see I have both a 4x4 and a 2x2. Now, I don't typically use the 2x2. I have that for testing, uh, it's for comparison. But here's the 4x4. This one I have just mounted on the stud, and it's pointed through the sheathing and the shingles there. It is better, obviously, if it is pointed, um, you know, not through anything at all. If you have it outside, it is the best. Or if you have a, a gable in that you can point it through so that it doesn't have to go through the shingles. So that would be even better. But so this is really a fairly easy setup because I have it just going through the floor here. I obviously could raise it up, but I do um, take the uh, cables and move them around a lot and do lots of things. But so here's what I have set up to go in uh, to this junction box. I'll throw up some pictures here. I hate touching the fiberglass, it makes me a little itchy. But um, I have that going through into an electrical junction box. And then on the other side, this cable actually goes directly through. So let me go to the other side of the wall and just show you um, what that looks like. But you can see here is the door. And we'll just go on the inside to the other side of that wall. That's where I have some ethernet cables and my antenna cables ran. I don't mind the uh, giraffe there, but here is my setup. Now you can see I actually have the AT&T Egg, I have the Verizon Cube, and I have the um, T-Mobile One. It looks like it's waiting to restart. I got a new firmware, so that'll be interesting to see what that's all about. Um, but right here I have the connection from the other side of the wall, and it's not my favorite one because this does kind of get loose here. But um, that's what I opted to go for. They make some other ones that are maybe more tuned towards um, like TV installation, you know, behind the wall. And there is no rubber uh, grommet in there. 
I opted for the rubber because I thought it might seal it off a little bit better. I did end up putting a lot of um, silicone caulk actually on the the backside to at least prevent airflow and bugs and whatever else from getting inside there. This seems to work okay. Um, and I opted not to do any kind of other uh, connection there. You know, you could put, I looked at putting a face plate with SMA, you know, two male ends basically, so that, and then you'd have another short cable come out. But every connection that you make will actually, um, you know, weaken the signal. So I wanted to just keep it to the straight cable and come straight into the T-Mobile box uh, if I could. So that's what I ended up doing here. And you can see here by these being able to pivot some, it gave me a little bit more flexibility of getting this cable in and in there. But on like the Chester Cheetah, which I also use, I actually opted to get these, I think they're two foot extensions. And now these are small, lightweight cables, so they do hurt your signal some. But I got them specifically because I wanted it to be very flexible and give me some more um, flexibility as far as where I put these. And with these connections so far apart, at least with my older cable, I think I heard that they actually waveform extended the length of the breakout where all the four individual lines before they get bundled up. I could obviously cut this um, heat shrink back and open it up some, but I didn't want to do that. So I'll put a link to these as well. And then, uh, of course, if you want to get any waveform stuff, I have a 5% 5 discount code of Nader Tater that will get you 5% off everything. But um, in summary, that is what my setup looks like. Yeah, it's a bit messy, so don't look at the back side. Um, but now i got to figure out what um, this uh, new firmware is on this new T-Mobile gateway is. So um, that's my setup. If you have any questions, I'll put links for that device there. It's pretty cheap. I forget what it was, maybe eight bucks or something. All right, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below. I do answer those. And then, of course, a like the video if you found it helpful. And then consider checking out the rest of my channel if there's other things about T-Mobile Home Internet, Verizon, AT&T, home networking, smart home, Wi-Fi, any of that kind of stuff. I try to cover lots of things on there, so uh, check it out and let me know what you think.